Can you make New York style pizza outside of the namesake city or state for that matter? Some people say you can't. I'm here to tell you forget about it. By the end of this video, you'll know how to make the best pizza you can from the comfort of your own home, no matter the name you give it. I will also show you my full system that allows me to make pizza whenever I want without making any shortcuts or compromises on quality. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the crust. I will also attempt to answer the biggest debate in the pizza making community. Is New York City tap water essential for making the genuine article? Roll on with the food. To make pizza that will knock your block off at home, you'll need a few essentials. You'll need a stone or a steel. A link to mine is in the description. A steel gives you a crust that comes close to those wood fire ovens you see in pizzerias. They retain heat and can move heat faster than your lowly consumer oven is capable of. And are recommended over stones, not only for better execution, but it's impossible to break a good steel. Impossible. Forget about it. Also essential is a good pizza peel. Self-explanatory. You need to get your pizza onto your steel. I prefer a nice metal one. But you do you, baby boo. You'll need decent flour. I use King Arthur's as it is recommended by 12-time pizza champ Tony Gimignani for using if you don't have access to the more artisan powder. But if you do, then way to go, kid. I augment the all-purpose flour with Gluten, so I can save money. High gluten flour is considerably more expensive. You'll also need some diatastic malt, available on Amazon. It's a little trick that's used to get more color in your crust. Again, this is because home ovens don't go as high as those in pizza joints, you knucklehead. Filtered water, either from a Brita filter like this, or use bottled. But make sure it isn't mineral water or any of that fancy schmancy shit. Oh, kid. Not essential, but recommended a thermometer, some digital scales, and an understanding of the metric system. If you're gonna be serious about making high-level pizza consistently, you need to measure your ingredients, weights, and temperatures. Here's a good example. Using the metric system, you can weigh water. Every milliliter equals a gram. It's this kind of precision and ease of use that will give you the power to not only tweak your dough to your own environment, but give you maximum consistency going forward. Get out of town. And probably most essential is patience. It takes time above all to make good pizza. It takes 48 hours from start to finito. But once you take your first bite of one of these pies, you'll never rush the process again. I have a system that I use that ensures I can make pizza whenever I want after that initial investment of time, and I'll show you it right now. The whole pizza making process starts off with a pre-ferment called a poolish. It's really easy to make. It takes about 10 seconds. You mix the small amount of yeast with water till you see bubbles in it and then you add it to the flour and incorporate fully. You'll put a lid on this and keep it covered at room temperature for a minimum of 18 hours. Think of it as like a quick starter. It adds complexity, flavor and nuance to the dough. After 18 hours at room temperature, your poolish will have doubled in volume. Stick it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes while you weigh out the rest of your ingredients. Mix the yeast with the warm water and set it aside. Then we're going to mix the dry ingredients, the malt, the gluten and the flour together in a bowl with a whisk till fully incorporated. Next goes in the ice cold water and everything gets mixed up together. You're not gonna be able to mix it fully, but you'll get a rough lumpy dough going. The reason why we use ice cold water is to slow down the fermentation process. This is gonna add even more flavor to our dough and make it taste molto bene. The dough's gonna look really lumpy at this point. Now we mix the sugar into the yeast last minute just to dissolve the sugar. This isn't to activate the yeast. In goes the poolish and the yeast mixture. You might find that this dough has become really wet and sloppy and if it's not forming into a proper dough in the in the bowl just add a bit of flour to it and uh, keep going until it becomes more of a doughy consistency. And then after a few minutes of mixing just add the salt and the olive oil incorporate fully and transfer to a floured surface for kneading. Kneading dough is a lot easier than you think. You just push down on the dough with the base of your palm 
Turn the dough 45 degrees and keep repeating for about seven to eight minutes. The reason why you need dough at all is to build up gluten chains in the dough. This provides it with some elasticity and it allows it to leaven into a fluffy and chewy yet crispy dough. There's an actual somewhat scientific method to determine whether you've kneaded the dough sufficiently or not. And that method is called the window pane test. You cut off a small piece of the dough and stretch it in front of a light source. If it stretches without breaking, then the dough is ready to rest. If it breaks too early, then uh, you should knead it a little bit more. Now it's time to rest the dough at room temperature for 20 minutes before we ball it up. To ball it up, just weigh each ball out so that they all weigh roughly the same. Balling the dough is as simple as pushing it against the palm of your hand using your dominant hand. Just keep pinching it between the pushing hand and the bottom hand, as you can see in this demonstration. If you're as cool as me, you'll have some of these little silicone dough ball containers. Link in the description. They just make life so much easier and you can even use them as storage containers for toppings or even cooking them. They're good for up to 450 degrees in the oven. Failing that, you can just put all five dough balls on a lightly floured tray and cover it in plastic. The dough balls will then go back into the fridge for 24 hours. It really is a labor of love. It takes effort, and time but it's all worth it the dough is noticeably superior to pizzas that have been made in a shorter amount of time i'd be very suspicious about any recipe or person's claims that you can make pizza good quality pizza in a short amount of time on the subject of the labor element to it the kneading of the dough it can be quite physically intensive but it of course is therapeutic and really worthwhile to do it yourself you get closer to the dough and you can feel it at every stage and this allows you to perfect your pizza craft in my opinion a lot quicker than you would if you were just stood there staring at a mixer not to mention it's uh, free <laughs> you don't need to pay for your hands um, in most cases but I tried a mixer this uh, Hamilton Beach thing and uh, my quick review of it is 0 out of 10 for pizza dough it was absolutely useful Useless. and I did spend hours trolling the forums the reddits and the quoras and the pizza making forums and found that any type of consumer grade mixer is just going, going to be basically uh, not nearly as good as using your good old fisty poos so after resting in the fridge for 24 hours get as many dough balls out as you're going to use that night and freeze the rest transfer your dough ball to a bigger bowl You shouldn't need to oil it because it'll already be oil from this bad boy. Cover and leave it room temperature for one to two hours. It does need to come up to room temperature. As soon as I get that last dough ball out, I'll make the poolish for the next dough. To use a frozen dough ball, get a dough ball out of the freezer and transfer it to a bowl and leave it out for a few more hours. Or you can speed the process up by using this method. Just simply dunk it in some 90 degree water, leave it there for about 20 minutes, take it out, dry the bowl out, and place it back in the bowl and proceed as normal. Using a system like this means that you're always gonna have a pizza whenever you want it. You don't have to wait the 48 hours of fermentation time anymore. When you're down to one dough ball in the freezer, just make another poolish and start the whole process again. This pizza that you see on your screen now is a cheeky little white pizza that I made with a frozen dough ball. And as you can see, this thing is still full of life. In fact, the end product is indistinguishable from that of one of the fresh dough balls. Provided that the dough ball is wrapped airtight and not left in the freezer for an unreasonable reasonable amount of time. We can easily eat two or three pieces a week. That's the beauty of long fermentation times on a pizza is that the dough and the, the resulting pizza does not fill you up and make you feel disgusting and ready to explode. If you're not in a rush and you don't like the idea of using a little bit of water to speed up the process, just simply take the frozen dough ball out of the freezer the night before and leave it in a bowl in the fridge and then proceed as normal. Leave it out for an hour or two before you make the pizza. While the dough ball is resting out at room temperature, I do three things. The first thing I do is set the oven to 550 degrees. That's the maximum my oven will go. Yours might only go to 500 degrees. This needs to warm up the steel. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. I usually go for the full hour. In that time, I grate my cheese and I make my sauce. And the essentials to doing all that is in the next chapter. Getting the sauce and cheese right is just as important as getting the dough right. 
Here's some essentials to making New York style pizza sauce. One, use the best tomatoes you can find, San Maranzo. It'll tell you whether they're actually legitimately San Maranzo on the tin. Bonus, if you get some Italian tomato paste as well. You need oregano, sugar, salt, and a bit of oil. But the main thing is, we are not gonna cook this sauce. All you have to do to make it, quite simply, open the bloody tin. <clears throat> Measure your tomatoes out. You can always tell the difference between these San Maranzo tomatoes and the other caca that you get is by how much water is in the can with them. And these look lovely. Just a simple case of adding your ingredients. Sprinkle of oregano, a teaspoon of this, tomato paste, and you just blitz it up. One tablespoon or 15 milliliters of oil. This is just to give it texture. Boom, sauce made. You just put that on your pizza. You don't cook it because these tomatoes are already cooked during the canning process. There's no need to cook it any further. It's gonna sit on top of the pizza in the 500 degree oven anyways. Voila. Also very important, make sure your tomatoes are always at room temperature. It might be one of the most important elements of it. Putting cold pizza sauce on a pizza is just gonna ruin the leavening process and it's not gonna come out as beautiful as it would if you just have it at room temp. Always make sure that you buy non-grated cheese and grate it yourself because the grated stuff has anti-caking agents in it and it's not good. This is just cheese, low moisture mozzarella. This next chapter is dedicated to the hottest question in pizza, whether or not you need water from New York to make proper New York style pizza. It's a long winded and undoubtedly controversial few minutes of the video. But if you stick around to the end to hear my conclusion, I firmly believe the payoff will be worth it for everyone concerned. Failing that enticing proposition and you just want to see me make this effing pie, you can skip this chapter altogether. This question and the subject has reached mythical status now. Any attempt by me to show the results of New York style pizzas on social media has been met with this quandary. Usually with somebody in the comments pointing out that if I didn't use New York water, then I can't even call it New York style pizza. Who or where did they hear this from? And is that person a reliable source? Think about it. Are you one of those people who believe that the water from New York is the most important part of the pizza making process in New York? And if you are, where did you hear that from? One of your friends may Maybe, perhaps a relative from New York? Did the internet tell you? Is it a company that sells machines that quote unquote make New York water? Spoiler alert, I believe you do not need New York tap water or a machine that can make it in order to make great pizza. Whether or not you can call it New York style though is another question. Problem really though is that I can indeed make any pizza I want and call it New York style. The only thing stopping me is opinion. An opinion is not exactly official is it? In other words, the whole debate is quite frankly a little bit silly when you think about it. Let us take for a good example the way the people from Napoli have defined their pizza and how you literally, legally, cannot call a pizza pizza napolitana unless you have followed very strict criteria while making it. You can go to the official website and download the Disciplinari, which contains the regulations for obtaining use of the collective trademark yourself, where you'll find a very detailed PDF containing all the criteria for making a pizza napolitana yourself. There are two elements to this that I find important to this discussion. One of them is the fact that there is criteria like this in the first place that clearly defines an end product, that end product being a pizza no less. And secondly, that in the 21 pages detailing both the ingredients and the procedure with everything from the specific flour and yeasts you must use and temperatures and timings you must adhere to, to the exact method of forming the crust and very specific cheeses to be used. There are 29 words on the subject of water and they are as follows. It must be clean and free of gas, which means not carbonated. It must also be free of microorganisms, parasites, or chemical substances that represent a health risk. If that wasn't clear enough, it must be fit for human consumption. So, filtered water. Or you know, don't use puddle mud.
It seems a little bit telling that they went through all of the trouble of both setting up an official organisation that sole's purpose is to clearly and concisely define a pizza with a certain name and origin be made a certain way, only to prove that using water the least impactful part of the whole process. To just use water that wouldn't kill you or make you sick if drunk, surely if water was so important to the identity and taste of a pizza, they would include it in the criteria. There is, however, no such set of rules for calling a New York style pizza a New York style pizza. We have to use our own and it seems that doing that is quite confusing. No doubt why many people mention that water is the defining factor. After all, if it was just a simple case of sourcing the right flour and tomatoes and using the right type of oven, then companies like the New York Watermaker wouldn't be able to sell you their machines at got you at the dough ball prices. Searching the internet, what seems to be unanimous is the following description, that it is a pizza that has a crispy crust, and firm texture, but pliable enough to fold it in half to eat, usually only topped with sauce and cheese. But let's delve deeper into the water debate or water pizza gate keeping, as I call it, by deferring to some experts in the field of pizza and cooking in general. Pizza historian and tour guide Scott Weiner, or Weiner, don't know how to say that name, points out that there is such a large discrepancy between the quality of pizza in the over 2,000 pizza joints in the city, with a lot of these pizzas being called not necessarily outstanding by him, and that if the water was the single most important ingredient, then they would all be close in quality. He also states quite accurately that New York water is not static, and hasn't been for over 80 years. The constituent elements of the water is constantly in flow. Begging the question, which vintage of water are we talking about? Then we have MIT graduate and James Beard award winning author and all round favourite of foodies alike, J. Kenji Lopez Alt. He says water isn't as important as people make it. Nathan Maybold, ex CTO and software engineer turned mad food scientist, author of award winning series Modernist Cuisine, Modernist Bread, and Modernist Pizza, the latter being a $300 box set of three books on the subject, he also agrees. Then we have Tom Lemon, formerly director of bakery assistants at the American Institutes of Baking, says that the baked goods in New York may actually succeed in spite of the water, stating quite rightly that the water being softer and having less calcium can lead to gooier dough. 12-time pizza champ Tony Gimignani, in his book The Pizza Bible, says you only need moderately hard tap water to make the pizza labelled The New Yorker in the first section of his book. Incidentally, it is his dough that I based mine off. You can just use regular flour to dust the counter for your pizza, but I recommend mixing flour and semolina together. Have this ready with your sauce and cheese before you go to make the pizza. Once your dough ball has been resting at room temp, it should look kind of like that. Risen a little bit. But the most important thing is the temperature of the dough. Just lightly pull it away from the bowl, flour your surface. This is the flour semolina mix. Surface is flour and semolina. We're going to lightly pull this away from the bowl, let it fall into your hand. Boink! Now the trick, the real trick, the shaping of a pizza dough, is to not mess around with this outside ring too much. Press right near it but not on it, and flatten down the middle. And then you can lightly pass it from hand to hand. Your hand is just open, you're just lightly passing it back and forth. This is gonna help us have a nice, fluffy, chewy crust, and the middle be crispy. Keep passing it back and forth. You shouldn't have to do too much to it if it's been set out long enough. Before you're ready to top it, make sure the bottom, your surface here is properly floured, else it'll stick. That's it. Then you're just going to get your sauce, they're about a year ladle's worth, on top, round to that crust, the cheese you just grated, evenly distributed, and now it's time to get it from here to there. The best way to do that is flour your peel liberally, don't be shy, and then shuffle it in. You see how it's shuffling? Keep it shuffling. 
and shuffle it off. Another little tip to get a lovely golden crust is to pull the piece out just as it started to brown and brush the crust with a little bit of olive oil. You'll see here I'm using a herb infused olive oil but regular olive oil will do the trick just fine. Then you want to stick the pizza back in the oven with the most golden side of the crust facing you so the least golden side is going to go to the back of the oven. After that you can top it with any combination of cracked pepper, oregano, parmesano cheese and flake chili. When you cut this pizza up into 8 slices, providing that your steel is a similar size to mine of uh, 14 inches, you're going to find that the 8 little slices aren't quite going to give you that New York uh, style pizza effect. Forget about it. Mm. Not nearly as much as one big slice would. So the simple solution is to just make the pizza into a single slice and the magic is complete. It's amazing how simply cutting the pizza a different way can really change your perception of the pizza and bring it that much more closer to seeming like a real New York pizza. And you also get to eat a full pizza in one sitting without feeling guilty about it because you're only having one slice. So there you go, forget about it. This is the exact same pizza with the exact same process, sauce, cheese, all the way through. If I made this into a 28 odd inch uh, pizza, it would be indistinguishable from any slice you could find. Some of the best slices, my tell you, down any street in the Big Apple. How do you like that? So now it's time for both some massive disclaimers, a very funny twist of irony, and my final conclusion on the whole debate. I'll start with a disclaimer. <clears throat> I've never eaten pizza in New York, so in complete honesty, I cannot comment on whether or not the pizza I make in this video tastes authentic or not. All I know is it fits the ubiquitous description online and tastes as good or better to me than a lot of pizza I have eaten elsewhere in the country claiming to have the real McCoy. I plan two more videos on this subject. The next will be where I invite New Yorkers living here in Atlanta to put my pies to the test. After that, I will travel to New York and try every pizzeria that I research to be the best in town. Then I will bring water back here for a second test. Stay tuned. Now the irony. Earlier in the video, I cited Tony Gemignani as stating that you only need moderately hard or filtered water to make his New Yorker. I also mentioned the AVPN, or Associazione Veracci Pizza Napolitana's strict requirements to call a pizza Napolitana not really giving too much of a shit about the water. Remember that? Well, in a fantastic twist of irony, in his book, he tells a story of when he won the much coveted World Cup of Pizza in Naples, being the first American to do so. He says he was the only one to use the local tap water, and that the other international competitors were all using bottled water. Quote, When I was making my dough the day before, I tasted the tap water, not good. Campania is a volcanic region and the municipal water tastes and smells like sulfur. But I went with the smelly stuff from the tap. So put that in your cup and drink it, why don't you? I have made many pieces in the pursuit of this video and I've spent hours reading shit on the internet. And my conclusion on the whole matter is thus. I do not think you can in fact make truly authentic pizza outside of New York. But I think it is a much more complicated matter than just shipping in some water or using some Emperor's New Clothes level of water filtration. I think when you eat food somewhere, you're eating a part of that place. There are yeasts in the air, and microorganisms everywhere that are in every bite. There's the sights and the sounds around you, the honking of taxis and the steam billowing from the gates in the floor. People telling you to go f yourself, why don't you? In a much more poetic sounding way. In particular to pizza, you have a city that is drenched with Italian culture that have honed techniques over the decades. They take their time with the process and have the most competition in the world when it comes to staying in front of the crowd. It's these things above all that I truly believe people are alluding to when they say it's the water. I suppose I'll know better when I go there. Watch this space. Thanks for watching this. I'll see you next time.